Captivating green eyes Those tender and sweet eyes Those never ever mean eyes They're so loving and true The sea beneath the blue skies Is reflecting your green eyes And the trees in the woodland Keep reminding me to My heart where in my love lies Is telling me all You know something, Miss Marple? I rather suspect that you and I both share a secret passion. Do we, Mr. Treves? Murder, Miss Marple. Oh. Well... I'm not quite sure that I would describe it as such. Detective stories, they get it all wrong, don't they? Always begin with the murder when the murder should come at the end, don't you think? In certain cases, perhaps. But then again, yes, I... Yes, Miss Marple, I think it would be safe to say I'm pretty expert in these matters. Oh, without a doubt, Mr. Treves, you've devoted a whole lifetime to the law. And 99 times out of 100, a murder evolves over years, with all the causes and events bringing certain people to a certain place at a certain time. Or, what's the word? Converging, Mr. Treves? That's it. Converging. Converging towards a given spot, and then it comes wallop. Zero power. All converging. Converging. Towards... Zero? Yes. Bullseye. Towards zero. Yesterday. Did you? She's asked us to join them in Monty in July. And that is simply divine. It's too sickening we can't. We can't, can we? No, we can't. But I don't want to go to Dreary or Devon. We have to. I owe it to Camilla. Bit. It's not a question of sucking up, it's a question of affection. And piles of dosh. You know she hates me. Of course she doesn't. It's all about Audrey, I know it is. Woman has never forgiven me. She's old. Her generation finds it almost hard to take. She even thinks you behaved badly. I did. It's because Audrey chose to make such a frightful fuss. She had a nervous breakdown. She was playing up. You have to learn to lose gracefully. You have to accept these things. She did. She divorced me so we could marry. Anyway, you two have nothing in common. She's just like a mangled old dishcloth. She gives me the creeps. Perhaps we should join Bunty down in Monte Carlo. What about Devon, Camilla? Well, we can always pop down in September. But I thought she's always there in September. Audrey, you mean? Yes, of course, Audrey. <laughs> well, we can't be there at the same time. She thinks it's quite a good idea. How do you know what Audrey thinks? I happened to run into her yesterday. Run into her? Never said. You didn't tell me you'd bumped into Bunty till this morning. Bunty's not my ex-wife. It was pure chance. We had a little chat. Actually, she was very nice. She even asked how you were. Oh, sweet of her. And then it sort of came to me. How much more sensible it would be if you two could be friends. It would make me so happy if this could work out. Preposterous. The boy must be barking. It does seem rather odd. Why? He was making friends. Oh, it's too revolting. 
No, 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 it can't be Neville's idea. Must have come from that ghastly trollop he married. Well, people tend to be a little more relaxed nowadays about this sort of thing. Not under my roof. And it's only because Matthew, God rest his soul, was so devoted to the boy that I allow that scarlet toed creature here at all. I do not like her. The way she pursued Neville until his marriage was in tatters. No, I blame her entirely for the whole thing. Well, Neville had a little to do with it. Well, of course he did, stupid boy. But if it hadn't been for that harlot's persistence... Poor Audrey, what that woman's been through. And she was so nearly such a good wife. If only she'd been a little more athletic. <laughs> There's simply no discretion. Exactly. So girls like Kay Mortimer go around stealing other people's husbands and gather about with entirely unsuitable types like uh, that young man who's always hanging around her. Ted Latimer. Yes. Touch of the Dago, I suspect. Unless he wears makeup, which wouldn't at all surprise me. Well, he's a friend from her Riviera days. And I'd very much like to know how he manages to live the way that he does. By his wits, I would imagine. Oh, I expect he'll be loafing about at Easterhead while they're here. Oh, why can't everyone leave me in peace? Old Freddie Treves practically next door at the Balmoral Court. Thomas Royd boring us all senseless with tales from a lair. And Miss Marple, of course. Oh, and of course, Marple. A sketching holiday, I ask you. <laughs> She'll be over at Easterhead too. Mm. Marple and the gigolo. Well, now, there's a thought. No doubt she'll be poking her nose in everywhere. She was just the same at school and such a ghastly swat. Perhaps you'd prefer that I put Neville off. Oh, no. Let them all do what they want. With any luck, I'll be dead by September. Pierce. Strange. His back hand's good. I'll give him that. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Oh, you know me. Never miss an opportunity. And how's the devoted wife today? I'm absolutely furious. Never got it into his head all of a sudden that Audrey and I, Audrey, mind, that we should become bosom buddies. What on earth for? I haven't the faintest idea. Have you ever heard of anything so stupid? And he wants us all to go on a jolly holiday together down to Camilla's in Devon. I don't know what's got into him. When are you going? September, apparently. It's bound to be her doing. Sneaky little cat. Don't worry, sugar. I'll be there to hold your hand. I'll book a room again at that hotel across the bay. Advantage, America. Oops. Out! The ball was out. It was in. Of course it was. Game seven championship, Merrick, 6-3, 2-6, 6-4. That's Neville's trouble. He's too bloody sporting. I must say, my dear, I found Neville's suggestion quite disgusting. It might, you know, be rather a good thing. But you can't want to be here with that dreadful woman. It's not that bad, and, and if Neville wants it. But do you want it? That's the question. Yes? My God. What is it? For a second there, I thought it was Rita Hayworth. You stupid child. That gorgeous old thing. Rude, horrible creature. How are you? Irresistible. We've been so looking forward to this, darling, haven't we? We couldn't wait. Hello, Camilla. Okay. Yes. Settled in? Yes, thank you. Naughty boy. This is all perfectly ghastly. Thomas. 
Hello, Mary. How lovely. Seven years. Nearly eight. Is it really? That's too long. How's the plantation? Damned hard work. Rubber, isn't it? Yes, but I'm thinking of branching out into Sago. Sago? <laughs> well, nothing's changed much around here. Oh, except for that vile new hotel. girl to put me up. I hope it hasn't been a bother. It's a godsend, believe me. Audrey's particularly looking forward to seeing you. Is she? Things have been very difficult with Neville and his wife there as well. His idea, apparently. Not a very good one, as it turns out. What exactly is the problem? Well, that's just it. It's hard to put one's finger on. I mean, Audrey's been charming about the whole thing, but one never really knows with her. Treat, sir. Welcome back to the Balmoral Court. Oh, Mrs. Rogers, the old deaf old speak in Spanish. There's been a slight change of plans, sir. Oh. But I'm sure you won't be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> there she is, stately as a galleon. Yes, dear old Gull's Point. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you, but I, I, I thought... Ah, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I've always tended to stand too near the edge. Yes, it is rather tempting, isn't it? I had to fetch this, thought I'd get some air. But Neville Strange. I know. Jane Marple. I just popped in to see Camilla and came up here to try a little sketch. A friend of hers, are you? Oh, yes. We go back a long way, on and off. Such a pity about Wimbledon, Mr. Strange. That boy who beat you, Barry. Uh, Merrick. Mm. Flash in the pan, I'm sure. The best man on the day. Oh, sporting life. Oh, how fascinating. <laughs> you must tell me all about it this evening. This evening? Mm, that would be nice. <sighs> Goodbye, then, Mr. Strange. Still the same old Thomas. Thought you might have perked up a bit. Now, Adrian, he was a bright spark. Such a waste. You should have made it to the funeral. It was difficult. There's no excuse. He was your brother. He came off the road very close to here, you know. So I gathered. Exactly a year ago. Do you know what he was doing down here? Haven't a clue. What's more, he never came to see me, which was most unlike him. So... Good to be back. Your timing's not too clever, I must say. Mary mentioned that. Don't know what's got into Neville bringing those two together. Still, it may have its compensations. What do you mean? You've always had a soft spot for Audrey, haven't you, Thomas? From the time you were children when your parents took her in. She was like a sister to me and Adrian. Oh, I think she was rather more than that. And then Neville came along and snatched her from under your nose, didn't he? Oh, don't look so miserable. Perhaps patience will finally reap its reward. This is all I could find, the Illustrated Post. That'll do, I suppose. Neville? I'm so sorry, Neville. I thought you were speaking to me. Oh, that's... Oh. 
so sorry. Who the hell are you? Royd. Thomas Royd. Oh, yes. The man from Malaya. That's right. Well, if I were you, I'd go back. Pronto. Ah, oh, Royd. Hello there. Strange. Mm -hmm. You arrived. Met the wife, I suppose. In a manner of speaking. <laughs> yeah. I'd better go now. Why did you give it to her? It's only a magazine. You gave it to her and not to me. What's it matter? Of course it matters. I'm your wife. You humiliated me and that's exactly what she wants. She's trying to turn you against me. Well, you've got to stop this. Let's leave. I hate it here. You've only just arrived. Please, Neville. We're staying. And that's that. Welcome back. Miss Martin. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. So, here we all are. Is Camilla not joining us? I'm afraid not, Miss Marple. Nowadays, she prefers her own room. Is your hotel comfortable? Oh, yes. Most comfortable, thank you. Yes. It's not a bad old dive. And top-notch billiards. We should all come over one day. It's got a lovely sandy beach. I was thinking of going sailing tomorrow. I'd like that. We could all go sailing. I thought you were playing golf. I can play another day. Do you play golf, Kay? Hardly. She'd be good if she took the trouble. She's got a natural swing. Do you play games, Audrey? No, I don't. So you and Camilla were at school together, Miss Marple? Yes, indeed. There's a thought. The two of you in boaters and gym slips. <laughs> How long have you known Camilla, Mr. Treves? Oh, we go back years. Through Matthew, that's how I know her. Matt and I took silk together, yes. And whenever I'm down in this part of the world, I always make sure I see the old girl. Mr. Treves is staying close by at the Balmoral Court. You always have the same suite, don't you, Mr. Treves? Not this year, unfortunately. Some cock-up with the booking, so they put me up top. Oh. Uh, good job they've got a lift. Ticky ticker, you see. Still, sharp as a knife, eh, Mr. Treves? Oh, yes. I haven't forgotten who I am yet. I say, that medic's doing rather well, isn't he? Gave you a damn good thrashing at any rate, eh? <laughs> Flame red, unforgettable. Miss Marple, and she would be glad to see you up in her room. Thank you. Excuse me. Everyone behaving themselves? Yes. It was the most delicious dinner. I expect the gigolo put that dreadful racket on, or was it the frightful K? They seem to be having a good time. It's not a bloody dance hall. Sketching, eh? Uh, Been not it long? Nope. 
but I must oh, say... Always good with your hands, weren't you? Mm, needlework, pottery, all that sort of nonsense. Too fiddly for me. Much preferred to be stomping around a pitch with a stick in my hand. I remember. The only exercise I get now is lifting these damn things to my lips. We weren't that bad looking, were we, Jane? No. I think we were... Look at us now. Two old crocs waiting to drop off the twig. My earring. Oh, so, so, sorry. Uh, wait a second. You're pulling. Wait a second. Let me help. So, what do you think to the harem? I'm not sure. I just can't fathom how a chap could leave Audrey for Kay. It does happen. Oh, well, of course it happens. But if you were a man, wouldn't she drive you off your nut? Perhaps it won't last. He may marry again. Maybe even return to his first wife. To Audrey? Mm. Oh, no, never. No, she's too proud. Oh, where love is concerned, pride is a quality more often spoken of than acted on. Don't pontificate, Jane. It sets my teeth on edge, what's left of them. No, no, you don't understand. Audrey was head over heels for Neville, and after he left, she never wanted to see him again. And yet she's here now. Perhaps she wanted to show that she doesn't care anymore. Or would like to think so. You don't mean she might still hold the candle for him. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 she's behaving perfectly in an impossible situation. Whereas Neville is behaving very badly indeed. And I find my so, Ah, Miss Marple, dismiss the royal presence clear for a dance. Oh, that's most kind of you, Mr. Treves. But I think perhaps not. Just as well. Probably killed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that young fellow knows his onions. Yes. Quite the professional. Rather decorative, too. I wonder what he does for a living. One can only imagine, eh? I sense you're quite a shrewd observer, Mr. Treves. You're a shrewd observer yourself. You know something, Miss Marple. I rather suspect that you and I both share a secret passion. Do we, Mr. Treves? And what would that be, I wonder? Murder, Miss Marple. No. Time for your tonic, my lady. Waste disposal on the men, Barrett? Oh, no, my lady. I'll be forever a slave to my bowels. I see they've acquitted the morphine murderer. It was in the Times this morning. Morphine murderer? Jumped the gun calling him that in the first place. Accidental overdose, they decided. You sound sceptical, Mr. Royd. Well, it sounds pretty dodgy to me. Where there's smoke and all that. I knew a case once. Oh, perhaps not. Those. Oh, do go on, Mr. Treves. Oh, it concerned two children. They were playing with bows and arrows, and one shot an arrow through the other one's eye, and the poor child died. A regrettable accident, the inquest concluded. Was that it? Yes. There was, of course, another side to the story. A farmer, some time previously, happened to have noticed the child who fired the fatal shot practicing. You mean... It might not have been an accident at all. Well, I don't know, but it was stated at the inquest that neither child had ever used a bow and arrow before. What did the farmer do? He did nothing. Perhaps he felt the child should be given the benefit of a doubt. But you're in no doubt, are you, Mr. Treves? It was murder, Mrs. Strange. Particularly ingenious and planned down to the last detail. What was the reason? Childish revenge for a perceived injustice. But to keep hold of that intent, quietly practicing day after day, and then the final piece of acting with the accident and the pretense of grief. That could only stem from the wickedest mind. Well, now, there's food for thought. What happened? Uh, change of name. The child is now an adult somewhere in the world. The question is, does that person still have a murderer's heart? It was a long time ago. But I would recognize my little killer anywhere. Surely not. Oh, yes. 
because of a certain physical peculiarity. But I best not dwell on the subject. I should be on my way. No, oh, have another drink, Mr. Trees. Why not come out for a little? I think I shall go to bed. Thank you. Do excuse me. I must see that Lady Tresillian's settled. <sighs> You've danced me off my feet, Teddy. Simply must go to bed. Good night, everyone. Good night, Teddy. Oh, there's a plan afoot to come to Easterhead tomorrow. Whenever you're ready, Miss Marple. That's very kind of you, Mr. Latimer. I nearly forgot. There's something I have to get from the car. Oh, what a restless young man. <laughs> a friend of Mrs. Strange, I understand. No, of K. Strange, yes. Confusing, isn't it? Having two of them in the house. More uncomfortable, I would imagine, for the original of Mrs. Strange. I expect so. You were brought up together, weren't you? You and Audrey Strange. Yes. Oh, you must know her well. Why did she come, Mr. Royd? I suppose she didn't like to refuse. I wonder why he would be anxious for such a reunion. I really don't know. It's stupid of him, if you ask me. Oh. Good night. Good night. I'm so sorry about that. Mm? Your coat, Miss Marple. You must come again. Oh. You seem to have cheered her up enormously. What have you got there? Dance records. Kay asked me to bring them over. She didn't say. Ted. We'll make a move. Motor's out front. <gasps> Goodbye. Goodbye. It's true. Hmm? It's true. I'll walk you back, shall I? Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful night. Yes. <laughs> Do you know, I think I might join you. A little air would be lovely. Thank you. Uh... Delightful evening. Miss Alden. <laughs> Most instructive. Instructive? Hear that, man? Yes. We old fogies, you know. You notice quite a lot. You don't have to tell me, Mr. Tree. Oh, Thomas, you gave me a shock. I've been down to the ferry for a bit of a walk. No nightmare. Shh. Shh. Quiet as the grave, which is perhaps why I feel so much all at home. Damnation. What's wrong? It lives out of order. I'm going to have to walk up. We could always come back and stay the night. Nonsense, fit as a fit. Oh. As a fiddle. Let me come up with no, you. I wouldn't hear of it if I go slowly. Slowly. One step, two step, up the wooden hill. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night, Mr. Treves. Good night. Good night. Good night. story Mr. Treves told last night, wasn't it? The child in the bow and arrow. Yes. It sent a shiver up my spine. He's such a funny old stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Teddy. Kay and Ted go quite well together, don't they? Absolutely. I suppose they do. They like the same things, have the same opinions. What a pity. What? Well, I was going to say what a pity it was she ever met Neville. I'd rather not talk about it. Of course. 
stupid of me. I'd hoped maybe that you got over it. There's nothing to get over. I hope they'll be very happy together. Well, that's very nice of you. It's nice, it's the truth. It's all over now. You know, I actually find them rather exciting, <laughs> Kane Neville. They lead such different lives from me. I quite envy them. And even you, with all your unhappiness, have had experiences that I should probably never have. I envy you too. I really do. It can't be much fun for you, living with Camilla. Well, I'm well fed, comfortably housed. Thousands of women don't even have that. Poor old Thomas. I'll go and have a word. Letter back. May I? <sighs> of course. You've been deserted, I see. Yes. She's been claimed by her legal owner. <sighs> you enjoying yourself down here, Mr. Latimer? Hmm. As much as I'd enjoy myself anywhere. They don't like me, Miss Marple. The Gulls Point mob. I'm an outsider, see, and they don't take to outsiders. You don't take much to them, I suspect. What is it particularly you don't like about them, Mr. Latimer? They're smug. That's what I don't like. Really pleased with themselves. Shut off from the common herd. Oh, I'm sorry you feel like that. It's true, though. Perhaps they may from time to time appear, as you say, somewhat smug, but really, you know, inside, I'm sure they're quite human. Whatever their faults, I don't believe malice to be one of them. You're not very happy, are you? Have you always been in love with her? And she? I thought so. Until Strange came along. And you're still in love with her? Shouldn't you go away from here, Mr. Latimer? You're only letting yourself in for more unhappiness. Sweet old thing, aren't you? By the way, I've got your earring. Oh, good. I hate being without earrings. Why is that? Because of this. Oh, yes, old bouncer bitch. I had a sore paw or something. Yes, and I stupidly bent down to stroke him. I was very young. It was just after your family took me in. It was quite nasty, but you can hardly see a thing now. But still, I know it's there. Why did you marry him? I fell in love. Why? What attracted you? You hate him, don't you? Hardly surprising, is it? He's got everything I have. I'm just dull old Thomas with a gummy arm. And he married the only girl I've ever cared for. But you've always known that, haven't you? I know you don't care for me. Even as children, you preferred Adrian. He had a schoolboy crush. I wish to Christ it had been me in that car and not him. Don't. Thomas, please. There's something I don't understand about that. About what? Adrian's death. Well, it's really very simple. 
He died in a car accident. What was he doing down here? Why didn't he visit Camilla? How should I know? I'm beginning to think it isn't so simple as just another accident on a country road. Hello, Audrey. Roy. I'll stretch my legs. It is all right between us, isn't it? Yes, of course. I mean, we're good friends and all that. Yes. Why wouldn't we be? Audrey. Your wife wants you. Kay, you mean? That's what I said. You're my wife, Audrey. Miss Alden, her ladyship wants to see you at once. I'm so glad you're back. Camilla, what is it? It's Freddie Treves. He's dead. Dead? Yes, isn't it terrible? It was so sudden. He must have collapsed as soon as he got back to the hotel last night. Oh, I can't believe it. He had a weak heart, of course, but there was nothing wrong with dinner, was there? Oh, I don't think so. Would you go to the Balmoral Court and ask if there's anything we can do? Yes, yes, of course. And take Thomas with you. He might be useful. I gather Mr. Trees was dining with you at Gull's Point last night. Yes, Doctor. How did he seem? <laughs> Very well. This heart business. You just never know when it's going to hit you. I had a look at his medication, and it was clear he was in a pretty bad way. He was always so careful. I'm sure he was, Mrs. Rogers. But any extra strain, however slight, and bingo. But such as walking upstairs. Absolutely. Although, I'm sure he would have avoided that. Oh, yes. He always used the lift, always. But, except last night. What do you mean, Miss Alden? Well, well, the lift was out of order, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It hasn't been out of order for weeks. What a terrible thing. Yes. Perhaps it was some sort of misunderstanding or a practical joke. It's not very funny. One of the guests, or maybe one of the porters. Poor Mr. Trees. <laughs> and as the doctor said, he, he did have a very weak heart. You bastard! Ah. Oh, dear. This is not what you think. It's exactly what I think. You just can't keep away from her, can you? Oh, for God's sake, Kay. I'll leave you alone. Yes, I wish you would. Yes, that's right. Run away. You've got what you wanted. This has absolutely nothing to do with her. Blame me if you like. Oh, I do like making me look like an idiot. What sort of man are you? A pretty poor one. You come after me, you divorce your wife. It's no good, Kay. We don't belong. I won't let you go back to her. I'll kill you first. And her too. I expect you'll be glad when things get back to normal. Do you still play the piano? I'm afraid I've let it slip. You used to play rather well. I thought you liked music. I often wondered how you could manage an octave. Your hands are so small. I've got a long little finger. Hmm. That means you're selfish. Is that true? Yes, it is. If you're unselfish, you have a short one. Your left hand's what you're born with, and your right hand's what you make of your life. Now, Neville here is a very interesting case, aren't you, darling? Look how small his left-hand little finger is. Whereas his right ones are quite long. Which shows just how selfish he's become. <laughs> An old wives' tale. And you know all about them, don't you? How long is it now you've been with Lady Tresillian? Oh, well, um... I came when my father died, so uh, going on 15 years now. I I'm 35, if that's what you want to know. <laughs> no, I wasn't meaning... I mean... I, I, I've had this since I was very young. It's rather ridiculous, isn't it? I wonder what Mr. Treves would have to say about it. Tell 
us about your arm, Mr. Royd. It happened when I was a child. I was jammed in a door during an earthquake. It left me rather lopsided. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Royd, please. <laughs> I think I might pop over to Easterhead, catch Latimer for a game of billiards. Will you take the car? No, the ferry. It's pouring. I know. I'm going to bed. What a killing head. Good night. Good night. Night. Ah, better be on. If you please, sir, Lady Tresillian would like a word. There are certain things, Neville, that I will not permit in my house. Now, I have no wish to listen to anybody's private conversations, but if you and your wife insist on brawling in full view... I'm sorry about that. You wish Kay to divorce you so that you and Audrey can remarry, is that right? Just a gist of what you've heard. I will not allow it. I would have thought that's my business. You've used my house to make contact with Audrey, or else she's used it. She's done nothing of the sort. Kay is your wife. She has rights of which you cannot deprive her. You've made your bed, now lie on it. It's got nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me. And Audrey, what's more, leaves this house tomorrow. You can't do that. Don't you raise your voice to me. I will not have it. The first blow smashed the bone and killed her. The second one was just to make sure. How long has she been dead? I'd put it between ten and midnight. And this is what hit her, is it? Presumably. She must have been hit with the back of it. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit awkward. Damned awkward. The whole thing's awkward. She was struck, you see, on the right temple. Whoever did it must have stood here on the right-hand side of the bed, looking towards the head of the bed. There's no room on the left. Left-handed? That's the easiest explanation. And Nibelik's right-handed, sir. Perhaps it didn't belong to the man who used it, sir. Supposing it was a man? It's heavy enough for anyone to have landed a terrible swipe. But you couldn't swear this was the weapon, could you, Doctor? I'd need to analyse the blood and the hairs. Do you think she was awake when she was hit? She looks fairly astonished. Unless she slept like that. Oh, a lovely set of prints, sir. Very obliging chap. He leaves you the murder weapon, good set of prints. It's a wonder he didn't leave you his card. I'd better see to Barrett. Who? Lady Tresillian's maid. She was found in a coma early this morning by the young housemaid, Alice. She's the one who found the body. She'd been doped with barbiturates. Had she now? She could have rung for help till she was blue in the face. Her maid was out for the count. Someone had spiked her centipods. Well, I've not heard that one before. So someone who knew all the household routine. That's where you come in, old chap. Do you think someone could have handled this with gloves on after the fingerprints were made? Not without smearing them. These are clear as day, sir. Big beauties they are. Too big for a woman, do you reckon? I say so, sir. That bell pull. I'm quite fit. Uh, this is Thomas Royd, an old friend of the family, uh, Audrey Strange. And um, this is uh, Neville Strange and Kay Strange, Neville's wife. Good morning. And this lady? Oh, I'm sorry, this is Miss Marple. Jane Marple? Yes. Good morning, Superintendent. I don't believe we've met. No, madam. But a colleague of mine, Colonel Melchett, has uh, spoken of you on more than one occasion. Well, I hope. Well, he's certainly spoken of you. Dear Colonel Melchett. Are you staying here too, Miss Marple? Oh, no, Superintendent. I'm staying at the Easter Head Bay Hotel. But I knew Lady Tresillian of old. A terrible shock. Well, yes, to all of us. But we're anxious to help in any way. 
As far as we can tell, the house doesn't seem to have been broken into. That would appear to be the case, madam. Does anybody recognise this? Is that what... horrible? Looks like one of mine. Can I see? Oh. Yes, it is. Golf as well as tennis, sir. I saw you at Wimbledon. My daughter's a great fan Good. of tennis. Particularly keen on that Merrick chap. Certainly knows how to hit a ball, doesn't he? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you've no objection, we'd like to take your fingerprints. It's purely a matter of routine, you understand. If you'd care to make your way into the study, you'll find Detective Sergeant Jones waiting in there with his kit. And, uh, I wonder if you've got any idea, sir, who Lady Dressilian's solicitors are. Yes, Asquith and Trelawney have salted you. Thank you, sir. I need to look into the estate. You mean, who inherits the money? That's right, sir. The will and all that. Well, I don't know about her will. I don't think she had much of her own, but as to the bulk of her property... Yes, Mr. Strange? It comes to me and my wife under the will of her late husband, Sir Matthew. He was my official guardian, you see. He and Lady Tresillian looked after me when my parents died. He left the estate in trust for his wife only during her lifetime. Any idea of the amount? Not offhand, no. Uh, somewhere in the region of 100,000? Each. Between us. Tidy sum, nonetheless. It is, yes. Although, uh, I have plenty of my own. At what hour did Mr. Strange leave the house? Twenty past ten, sir. Or thereabouts. I left the front door on the latch, sir, for when he came back from Easter Head Bay. Do you remember what time that was? About half past two, sir. I heard voices, then a car drive away, and then I heard Mr. Neville come upstairs. You heard something? I couldn't help it, sir. See. I was going up to bed and I had to pass her ladyship's door and heard her and Mr. Neville going at it hammer and tongs. Do you remember what was said? Well, I wasn't listening, like. Of course you weren't. Perhaps you might have caught the odd word. Coffee, Thomas. No, thank you. Something stronger, perhaps? Where'd you find this? Bundled at the bottom of Mr. Strange's wardrobe. And look at this. Looks like blood to me. And it's spattered all the way up the sleeve. Well done, Williams. And there's something else, sir. Red hair, see? Here on the cuff. And there's brown hairs on the collar and right shoulder there. Well, well. A regular blue beard, our Mr. Strange. His arm around one wife and the other wife's head on his shoulder. And look at this, sir. Could mean he was trying to wash the blood off. Where's that lead to? Mrs. Strange's room. It's locked. On this side? The other. On her side, eh? This is where Barrett always kept the sun apart, sir. God, nasty little things. She used to put them in the soak at midday and they stood there till she went to bed. So anybody could get at them. No prints on the packet, I suppose, or the glass. Only Barrett's, apparently. Easy enough just to drop the stuff in, anyway. An inside job, don't you think, sir? Excuse me, sir. But I've done all the prints and only one set matches those on the Niblick. Neville Strangers, I presume. Planning your escape, Miss Barbara? Oh, 
Superintendent. You shouldn't really be up here, you know. But that's where Hammer may be down. Now, there was something I was going to tell you. The thing is, Miss Marple... About the night before last. Ah, yes. Poor Mr. Treves. We were dining at Gull's Point. Is this something that could wait, do you think, Miss Marple? No, I'm quite sure it couldn't, Superintendent. And after dinner, Mr. Treves told us a most tragic story that occurred some years ago. Two children playing with bows and arrows, and one of them ended up dead. Shot through the eye. Dear, dear. Yes, I know. Accidents will happen. But that's just it, Superintendent. Mr. Treves was convinced that it was not an accident. And even though the child was acquitted, but quite intentional, planned down to the last detail. Miss Marple, we really and must... Because of a certain physical peculiarity, he'd recognise the murderer anywhere. Or did he specify what? No, I'm afraid he didn't. This, this'll have to wait. But there's more. When Mr. Treves returned to the hotel, he found the lift out of order. Look, I don't really see... But apparently it wasn't. It seems someone put the placard there by accident. Accidents will happen. Yeah, and poor Mr. Treves, who had a very weak heart, had to climb the stairs and died. And I can't help feeling, Superintendent, that the placard was put there not by accident, but by design. Murder on the off chance, you could say. Because he'd recognised at dinner. The person who shot the animal. But please don't let me keep you. Good morning. A bit late, wasn't it, sir, to be going off to Easter Head? Well, it's quite lively over there, Superintendent, as I'm sure you know. And this is something of an early-to-bed household, isn't it? I took a key. But not your wife. She had a headache. Please go on. Uh, I was about to go up to change. Into what? I'd been wearing a blue suit. My best, as it happens, and as I proposed taking the ferry, I thought I'd change into an older one. Dove grey. Anthracite lining, double-breasted. We'd just like to get everything clear, sir. Do continue. I was about to go up and change when Herstal told me that Lady Tresillian wanted to see me, so naturally I obeyed the summons. You were the last person to see her alive, I think, sir? Yes. I suppose I was. How long were you with her? Twenty minutes or so. Then I changed, hurried off, just about caught the ferry. Then at the hotel, eventually... Tracked down Latimer, we had a game of billiards, and before we knew it, it was two o'clock. Last ferry had gone by then, of course. So Latimer very decently gave me a lift back. It's quite a way all around the estuary. He dropped me off about half past. That chat with Lady Tresillian, all right, was it? Why shouldn't it be? Well, the thing is, sir, some of your conversation was overheard. We had a slight disagreement. It was nothing. What about, sir? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, she ticked me off. Nothing unusual there. The old bird was an expert. Divorce and all that. She wouldn't have it, so we both got a bit heated. But we parted on perfectly friendly terms. And that niblick, Mr. Strange, any reason why it would have your prints on it? <laughs> it's my club. Of course they'd be on it. But I certainly didn't bash her over the head with No, what I mean is, sir, is there any reason why the prince would show that you were the last person to have handled it? That can't be true. Somebody else must have handled it afterwards, someone wearing gloves. Not without smudging your prints, sir. It isn't true. It simply isn't true. And perhaps you can explain why the sleeves of your blue suit are stained with blood. It's ridiculous. I wasn't even wearing that suit. Did you cut yourself, Mr. Strange? No, I did not. Surely you can't think I did such a thing. Why should I? I've known Camilla all my life. Well, you said yourself, Mr. Strange, that you come into a lot of money if she dies. I don't want money. I don't need it. That's what you say. Ring my bank. They'll tell you. You must realise, Mr. Strange, that we already have sufficient evidence to request a warrant for your arrest. What? But we've decided to give you the benefit of the doubt. For now. I had a headache. So I went to bed early. The next thing I knew, that wretched girl Alice was screaming the house down. Your husband, Mrs. Strange, did he happen to pop in to see how you were before he went off for the evening? No. So you didn't see him from the time you went to bed until you got up this morning, is that right? Yes. 
I noticed the door between your rooms was locked. Who locked it? Mrs. Strange. What? The bedroom door. Who locked it? I did. We'd had a row earlier on, if you must know. I was furious with him. Absolutely furious. Oh, dear. What was all that about, then? That bloody woman. It's all her fault. She's making him behave like a perfect idiot. And which woman would that be? His first wife, for goodness sake, Audrey. She got him down here in the first place. Neville says it was his idea, but it wasn't. It was she who put the idea into his head and made him believe he'd thought of it himself. Why would she do a thing like that? Because she wants to get her hands on him again. She's never forgiven him for running off with me. And this is her revenge. She's got him wrapped around her little finger. Why didn't you object to coming here, Mrs. Strange? Because it would have looked as though I were jealous. Aren't you? Well, of course I am. I've been jealous of Audrey from the start. And Neville's always felt guilty. Could never quite forget her. Anything you'd care to add, Inspector? Um... No, sir. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mrs. Strange. We have to ask a good many questions, especially with your husband inheriting so much from Lady Tresillian. Fifty thousand pounds. As much as that? Oh, very generous. We get it from old Sir Matthew's will, don't we? You knew all about it, then? Oh, yes. He left it to be divided between Neville and Neville's wife after Lady Tresillian's death. I must say, I didn't like her. Probably because she didn't like me, but... It's too horrible to think of someone coming along and cracking her over the head. It wasn't Neville, Superintendent. I'm sure of it. What makes you so sure, Miss Alden? Just doesn't like him. That's why. I understand he's had a few problems, Miss. It has all been rather difficult. And it was his idea to have this little get-together. So he says. But you don't think so? I've always thought that someone else put it into his head. Like who, Miss Alden? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Do you know that Lady Tresillian has left her maid Barrett a legacy? Yes, I did. And that she left you one too? Yes. Do you know how much? Enough to live on. Lady Tresillian was aware of how very little I have of my own. I always come here in September, and my husband, my ex-husband, wanted to come too, and asked if I'd mind. It was his suggestion? Yes. Not yours? It was his suggestion. And you agreed? One doesn't like to be disobliging. But you were the injured party? Yes. And you don't feel any rancor against him? Not at all. You have a very forgiving nature, Mrs. Strange. You're sure, are you, that this meeting was not your idea? Quite sure. Are you on friendly terms with the present, Mrs. Strange? I don't think she likes me very much. Do you like her? I think she's very beautiful. Well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Strange. It's most helpful. You're wrong about Neville, you know. We were married for eight years. He would never kill anyone for money. I do wish you'd believe it. There was any peculiarities yet, sir? They're all bloody peculiar, if you ask me. Audrey is a distant cousin. She lost her parents when she was nine, and my family took her in. She and the second Mrs. Strange haven't been getting on too well, have they, sir? I can't say that I've noticed. You know we found Mr. Strange's fingerprints on the weapon? Yes, he told us. And some blood on the sleeves of his jacket, the same group as Lady Tresillian transpires. Do you think he did it, Mr. Roy? I think it's most unlikely. Can you think of anyone who seems more unlikely? No, I can't. Don't loiter. Mama. We're now beginning to think the murderer was left-handed. Well, then, that narrows down your options, doesn't it, Superintendent? Tipping. We're on our way. Oh, I 
taken my senna and was getting into bed when my lady's bell rang. Did you notice what time it was? 25 past 10. Then as I went down, I spotted Mr. Neville on the stairs. He was just going out. Did you see what he was wearing? His grey double-breasted. <gasps> he did look worried. Then I went into her ladyship and she was so drowsy, poor dear, she couldn't remember why she'd rung. And that was the last I saw her. <laughs> Is there anyone who doesn't like you very much, Mr. Strange? Uh, I don't think so. Someone you might have injured in any way? Well, there is uh, one person, my, my first wife, Audrey. Oh. But I can assure you she doesn't hate me. She's behaved like an angel. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Strange. But I can't say I'd like the case against you, but it would have stood up in court, probably hanged you. Sorry, I don't understand. After you left her last night, Lady Tresillian rang for her maid. Then Barrett must have seen her. Alive and well. What's more, before she went into her mistress, she saw you leaving the house. But the niblick, my, my fingerprint. No, she must have been killed with something else. The club put there to throw suspicion on you, except because you're right-handed. Are you sure there's no one who'd like to see you hang? We took Mr. Strange across at 10.30 last night. And did you see him after that? Did you see him after that? No, sir, we didn't bring him back. Have you come across a bloke called Latimer? Edward Latimer staying over at Easter Head? No, oh, yes, yes, handsome young chap. Looks a bit foreign. Could be him. Didn't see him last night, sir. Though I did see him this morning. He popped over first thing. Came back a few hours ago. Waiter. Neville came over last night. He was very down in the mouth over something. Told me he'd had a row with Lady Tresillian. And I know things have been a bit ropey with him and Kay. He seemed quite glad to see me for once. Couldn't find you at first, I understand. Can't think why. I was here. All the time, sir. Well, I may have strolled out for a bit. Do you know, there was a real stink here last night. Strange noticed it too. Trains, I suppose. Or a dead rat under the floorboards. So when Mr. Strange had found you... We played billiards, we had a drink or two, and then I drove him back. He'd missed the ferry by then, and I dropped him off around 2.30. Oh, just one more thing. You popped over to Gull's Point this morning, didn't you? Yes. Any particular reason? To pay my respects. Not that they've ever paid me any, but you like to do the right thing, don't you? Well, he's too pleased with himself for my taste, sir. He's just the type of smash his own granny's head if he thought he could get away with it. Why would he do it, though? He doesn't stand a game. No, he's a bit fudgy about what he's up to before Strange tracked him now. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, Superintendent, Inspector, I'm so glad I've caught you. You seem to pop up everywhere, don't you, Miss Marple? Yes, I do, don't I? <laughs> well, I'd love to stay in chat. You really must get off. Oh, I quite understand, Superintendent. Well, it's all very convenient, isn't it? What is, Miss Marple? Mm. The nibbling and poor Barrett in a coma, a little too convenient, perhaps, makes the culprit look rather foolish, don't you think? And if the culprit were, for the sake of argument, Mr. Strange, he may be many things, but a fool, he certainly isn't. Gentlemen! <laughs> Miss Marple, we really don't have the time. Well, you see, if it weren't premeditated, why would he be carrying the niblick? And just supposing it was Mr. Strange, purely hypothetical, of course, uh, he'd have had to have been very cross indeed to have suddenly lashed out. And this is a man known for his even temper. Well, Mr. Ferry, sir. And if it were premeditated and he drugged Barrett so she couldn't hear the bell, why on earth would he leave the niblick for all to see? Doesn't quite add up, does it, Superintendent? All aboard the ferry! Oh. Uh, something else. Sir, we've got to go. Nobs. I beg your pardon. The fender knob is in the bedroom next door to the first floor bathroom. I popped in there this morning by mistake, and one of them seemed to be different from the other. Of course, it might have been my imagination. Uh, please don't let me detain you. Mm -hmm. Don't want to miss the boat now, do you? Come on.
That's it. That's what she meant. The left one is brighter than the right. Check them out, Jones. I'm worried, Thomas. Really very worried. Mr. Treves... Why are you worrying about him? Well, I've been wondering. That story he told about the child who shot the arrow. Well, why exactly he told it? There's print on the right-hand one, sir, but none on the left. Then this is the one we want. Those prints will be the maids, which means this one has been cleaned twice. Look, sir. Blood. I've been trying to remember. He told it so very deliberately, and he said he'd recognize the person, as though he already had. I mean, why should he do that? You don't think he knew Camilla was going to be murdered, do you? I don't think that's very likely. A word, if I may, sir, it won't take a minute. You inherit, as I understand it, half the late Sir Matthew's estate. Am I right, sir? Yes, that's right. Uh, who inherits the other half? I told you, my wife. Yes, but which one, Mr. Strange? Audrey, of course. She was my wife when the will was made. The bequest is quite simply worded. Our divorce makes no difference whatsoever. I take it Mrs. Audrey Strange is fully aware of this? Yes. And the present, Mrs. Strange? Kay. Well, I expect she is. We've never really talked much about it. I think you'll find, sir, that she's under the misapprehension that the money comes to you and the present, Mrs. Strange. How extraordinary. Well, you know, now we come to think of it, she has mentioned it once or twice, but I always assumed she was just associating herself with my share of it. Amazing, isn't it, sir, how husbands and wives can go on to one another without having the faintest clue what either one's rabbiting on about. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter much anyway. It's not as though we're short of money. Whereas it will make a big difference to Audrey. But surely, sir, since the divorce, she's been entitled to an allowance. Too proud, Superintendent. She's always persisted in refusing the allowance I wish to make her. Now, that is interesting. Thank you, sir. What the hell are you looking at? I'm sorry. Always lurking around, aren't you? I didn't know you were in here. Look at bad smell. Come on. Oh, she's got it down to a teed up pathetic little look. And Neville's fallen for it. Hook, line, and sinker. No, Kay, that's not it. Well, you won't get him. And you won't get his money either. You've got it all wrong. I've got you bang on from the start. You're a scheming little bitch. And the sooner you get out of our lives, the better. Audrey, no! No, you don't. What are you doing? I was just... I was... Oh, my poor darling. There's nothing I want anymore. You're so unhappy, aren't you? I'm shivering. Audrey, I understand. I do understand. Yeah. 
there, oh dear. Oh, Donald, you are naughty. Down! Oh, dear. He's I'm very excited, isn't he? I'm so sorry, Miss Marple. He just seems to be getting worse and worse. Ooh. Simply honking, Ooh. isn't he? Dear, yes, oh. he does seem to be a bit. Oh, you can smell him for miles. I caught him bouncing on a dead fish down on the beach. Oh. I'm sure you'd love that, wouldn't you, Donald? Oh, he did. He found it flat out amongst the rocks. I tried washing him in the sea, but it didn't make a bit of difference. Oh, he needs a good soaping, don't you, Donald? Do you know, I smelt exactly the same thing in the billiards room the other night. Donald had run off again, naughty boy. I looked simply everywhere for him. When I popped into the billiards room, it hit me. Phew! I still couldn't find him. Which night was that, Miss Brinton? Oh, I can't remember exactly. But that nice Mr Latimer was there, with the tennis player. Swoon. The same smell, you see? Oh, Donald, really? Oh, Donald, behave! Oh, I'm so sorry. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for gathering again at short notice. I realise it's an inconvenience to have a house full of policemen when you're trying to digest your breakfast, but there are one or two things. Who does this belong to? Is it yours, Mrs Strange? No, no, it isn't mine. Miss Alden? No, it's not my colour. And it's certainly not mine. <laughs> you sure it isn't yours, Mrs Strange? Perhaps you'd like to try it on. And she's already told you, Mallard, it isn't hers. Hmm. Snug fit. Maybe it is mine. I'm always losing them. It probably is yours, Mrs. Strange. I found it outside your window, pushed down into the ivy along with its pair. Look here, Superintendent. What a word. We've been finding some very curious things, Mr. Strange. This, for instance. Which consists, as you see, of a steel fender knob screwed and taped into the handle of a tennis racket. Little doubt, I would surmise, that this is what was used to kill Lady Tresillian. Where on earth would you find that? Looks like Audrey's old racket. The knob had been cleaned and put back on the fender. But the murderer had neglected to clean the screw. We found a trace of blood on that, Mr. Strange. In the same way, the handle and the head of the tennis racket had been taped together again and thrown into a cupboard, where they would doubtless have remained, if Detective Sergeant Jones hadn't been looking for something of the kind. Any fingerprints? Just one, on the tape binding the racket. And of course, you're not going to tell me whose print it is. The jacket you wore at dinner on the night of the murder had brown hairs on the collar. Well, they're mine, I suppose. They were a lady's hairs, sir. And red hairs on the sleeve. Well, I expect they'd be Kay's. And the others, well, they might be Audrey's. I caught my cufflink in her hair the other night. In which case, the brown hairs would be on the cuff. What exactly are you implying? There's a trace of powder on the inside of the jacket collar, the same as used by Audrey Strange, which suggests to me that on some occasion she must have worn it. And then there are the gloves. This is the left-hand one, stained with blood. She is left-handed, isn't she? To strike Lady Tresillian with the right hand would have been very awkward, the bed being where it was. But for a left-handed person, no trouble at all. Are you quite sure this little get-together was your idea, sir? 
suggesting that Audrey killed Lady Tresillian just to get her hands on the money. I'm not suggesting anything of the sort. From first to last, this crime has been directed at you, Mr. Strange. Ever since you left her, she's been brooding on how to get her revenge. In the end, she decided to have you hanged for murder. She chose an evening when you'd quarrelled with Lady Tresillian, wore your jacket so it would be stained with blood, left your niblick in the room knowing we'd find your prints on it. But the one thing she couldn't account for was her ladyship ringing for Barrett, which meant that Barrett saw you leaving the house. Can't be true. I swear to God, it cannot be true. Audrey's never borne a grudge against me. You have the whole thing wrong. He's right, Superintendent. You see, I don't believe that Mr. Strange did leave Audrey at all. But I rather think that she left him for Adrian Royd. Isn't that so, Mr. Strange? When Audrey was taken in by the Royd family, a great rivalry developed between the two boys, but then she married Mr. Strange and that was an end to the matter. Adrian, however, bided his time and finally made his move. They planned to run away together. Then Adrian was killed in a car accident. That is the reason Audrey went to pieces. Mr. Strange behaved with the utmost chivalry. He arranged that she should divorce him and that he would take the blame. I didn't know anyone knew. One hears things, sees things. Gradually, a picture forms. So, Audrey has no reason to hate Neville Strange. On the contrary, she has every reason to be grateful. And when he arranged this visit, she didn't feel she could refuse. Audrey Strange, superintendent, has no motive. Motive's one thing, facts are another. Facts showed that I was guilty not so long ago. D am I being asked to believe that there's someone who hates both you and Audrey Strange. Someone who, should the plot against you fail, have laid a trail that led directly to her. Do you know of such a person, Mr. Strange? Do you, Miss Marple? Superintendent, may I have a word, please? In private. You want me, don't you? Mrs. Strange, I have a warrant for your arrest on the charge of murdering Camilla Tresillian on Monday last, September 10th. I must caution you that anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence at your trial. It's almost a relief. No, no, Audrey, say nothing. But why not, Neville? I'm glad it's over. I always knew it was you. I knew you were up to something. Didn't I tell you, Neville? Kate, please. Oh, shut up, Kate, for God's sake. Why don't you look after her? All right. I should take you away from a lot of them. Let me come with you. No, Neville. You stay. Is there anything I can do, Audrey? Dear Thomas. I'd better call my solicitor. Of course, Mr. Strange, but first there's a little something I have in mind. I have things to do, Superintendent. I hope this won't take long. It won't, miss. I wish you'd tell us what you're up to, Mallard. Will do, sir. Don't you worry. Deep breaths, Mrs. Strange. Very good for nausea. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a very odd case this has been. One of the oddest I've ever known. And in keeping with the pervading oddness, I'd like to ask Miss Marple here to take the floor. Miss Marple. Thank you, Superintendent. What the hell is this? A WI meeting? The sooner you shut up, Mr. Latimer, the sooner we can get back. I'll be as quick as I can, I assure you. Poor Mr. Treves, the night he died, said something quite pertinent. The detective stories usually begin with the murder itself, but from his long career at the bar, he'd observed that murder usually comes at the end. Zero hour, he called it, and it's zero hour now. Lady Tresillian's death, you mean? No, Miss Alden, not Lady Tresillian's death. I am talking of the murder of Audrey Strange. 
You see, this is a crime that has long been planned down to the smallest detail, with one object and one object only, that Audrey Strange should be hanged by the neck until she was dead. And very cunning it was, too. First, there was the faked evidence against Neville Strange. Which we were meant to see through. Yes, indeed, and having been presented with one lot of faked evidence... It wasn't thought likely we'd consider a second edition. But when you come to look at it, all the evidence against Audrey Strange could have been faked. The weapon taken from her fireplace, the gloves hidden in the ivy, the prints found on the roll of tape taken from her room. And then there was the way she behaved when she was arrested. Practically admitted her guilt, didn't she? But if Audrey was a victim, why arrest her? I have to do my duty, sir. We have to act on the evidence, and at the time there was no evidence to the contrary. Until Miss Marple came along. Quite by chance, I was um, chatting to a fellow guest at the hotel, a young lady by the name of Diana Brinton. The girl with that pesky little dog? Yes, yes, Donald. Donald? Mm, a pleasant young girl, but possessed of rather a fanciful imagination. She reads a lot of historical novels, you see. And, uh, she happened to mention seeing late one night, the night of the murder, in fact, uh, a figure on the other side of the bay. A figure? What exactly do you mean? Well, a figure. A figure getting out of the water and climbing a rope which hung from a window up there. Well, I, of course, thought nothing of it. It was late at night. She may have been half asleep. And as I say, she has an active imagination. But in the light of later events, I began to think there might be some substance to what she'd said. So it was an outsider after all? Someone who came from the other side of the river, yes. Someone who wasn't seen between 10.30 and a quarter past 11 that night. And who might have swum across and back. Hey, Mr. Latimer. But I can't swim. Everybody knows I can't swim, Kate. Tell them. <laughs> Mr. Latimer. Pushed him. She pushed him. Didn't anyone see? Oh, he can't swim, can he? Well, I told you that. Daddy! Joan? He's going under. Teddy! Are you all right, Mr. Latimer? Of course, he's not all right. You might have killed him. No chance of that, Mrs. Strange. Jones here is highly proficient in the life-saving department. And look on the bright side. At least it's eliminated him from our inquiries. And it can't have been Mr. Royd climbing that rope because of his arm. Which brings us to you, doesn't it, Mr. Strange? Are you seriously suggesting I swam across the river Climbed into the house, killed Lady Tresillian, and then swam back again. Yes, we are. <laughs> Simply extraordinary. And what about the rope? You left it there yourself before you caught the ferry. So, in other words, I framed myself, did I? I rather think you did. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. And why the hell should I want to kill Camilla? You didn't. But you did want to hang the woman who'd left you for another man, and the fact that it entailed killing a woman who'd been something like a mother to you didn't seem to worry you in the least. You're a bit unhinged, aren't you? I'm not the one who's unhinged. Have been ever since you were a kid. I looked up that old bow and arrow case, see? It was the same then, wasn't it? Anyone who does you an injury has to be punished. Flicked you on the raw, didn't it, when Audrey left you? So you had to think up something special for her, and what better than to get her hanged? Pity you didn't have the brains to pull it off. All that niblick stuff. Powder on the collar, hair on the cuffs. We knew what you were up to all along. Laughing into our sleeves, weren't we, Miss Marple? I'm afraid it was all rather childish. But you see, like so many murderers, you thought you were being so clever, when in fact you were being really rather stupid. Stupid? Stupid. It was the perfect plan. 
worked out to the last detail, and you never would have guessed it if if you, Miss Marple, weren't such an insufferable busybody. Watch it, Strange. And if that old fool Treves hadn't set you all thinking. Because he recognised your long little finger, didn't he, Mr Strange? Which is why you rushed round to his hotel and put the sign on the lift, knowing full well the state of the poor man's heart. You deserved it. And so does Audrey. She deserves everything she's going to get. How dare she run off and leave me? Me! For that miserable little bastard, Adrian Roy. He shall hang. You've got to hang her. And I want to be there to hear her lousy neck crack. I was afraid of him as soon as we were married. A word or a look. But then I'd fancy I'd imagined it and that I was mad. And so it was for years, until Adrian reappeared and told me he still loved me, and suddenly my world fell into place. We were planning to run away together. And that's why he was down here just a year ago. But the day I went to meet him, he never came. Killed in a crash. And I can't help thinking that Neville had something to do with it. I think you might be right. Neville was very solicitous, said no one need know, and that I could divorce him. I felt so grateful, but I never felt I'd really escaped. When he suggested we should all come down here, I couldn't refuse. The story Mr. Treves told, the out-of-water sign on the lift, even when Camilla was killed, I didn't make the connection. When did you realize? When he was cleared. I saw him looking at me, and I knew. Mm. And you, Miss Marple? One thing, then another. The smell in the hotel, for instance, which that girl recognized in the billiards room when Mr. Strange was here. It suddenly came to me, perhaps he himself was the source of it. And I could only think of one way in which he would have come into contact with a dead fish. He must be quite a strong swimmer, because he had very little time. My theory was confirmed when I saw a piece of wet rope in the box room. Then, after he'd got back into the house, he put on his other suit, took the weapon which he had fixed beforehand, and made his way to Camilla's room. We won't go into that. Then, he slipped back out of his clothes, down the rope, swam back here to meet Mr. Latimer. Then after Mr. Latimer had driven him back, he had all night to clear up his traces and set the scene. Then, of course, there was the bell. The bell? Oh, by Camilla's bed. I nearly got it the morning after the murder when I saw a window pole and the bell wires on the ceiling. It was very, very clever of Mr. Strange. He rang the bell for Barrett from outside in the passage after his row with Camilla, so that when Barrett came down, she'd see him leave, and thus he'd have his alibi. Poor Camilla didn't know what she'd rung for because she hadn't rung at all. He struck her. Backhanded, by the way. His backhand was always his strong point. Good morning, Miss Marple. Good morning. Oh, Donald, come here. Is that the girl who saw Neville climbing the rope? Yes, it is. If it weren't for her, I must thank her. No, 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 my dear. Don't move. I, I've nearly finished. It was raining, wasn't it, the night of the murder? Yes, it was. If you just, um... She must have awfully good eyesight. Mm. Yeah. Perhaps she eats her carrots. Miss Marple. Well... 
As the superintendent says, the police have to act on evidence, so I thought I'd help them along a bit by suggesting there was a witness. Fortunately, Mr. Strange's confession has rendered that redundant. So what you imagined actually happened. Do you have a gift for this sort of thing, Miss Marble? You know, sometimes I think I do. <laughs> Miss Marple, would it spoil your sketch if I... No, no. Of course not, my dear. In fact, quite the contrary. <laughs>